ಧೃಷ್ಟ್ಯದೋಪದಾರ್ಥಸ್ಥ ಪರಸ್ಪರ ವಿಲಕ್ಷಣೋ ದೃಗ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದೃಶ್ಯಮ್ಮಾಗೇತಿ ಸರ್ವೇದಂತ ಡಿಂಡಿಮ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದ ಸಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಸೀನ್ ದ ಸಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ದ ಸೀನ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಾಯ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ಲೇಮ್ಸ್ and the problem is that all the time we think we are that seen this is the problem the moment we start looking for the seer our detachment from the seen occurs and one has to understand when we talk about seen we think these eyes are seeing and we are seeing objects and beings and situation and changing environment this is a scene that's completely false even the one who is seeing the scene is also part of the scene this one which we think is seer is not the seer it is part of the scene like other bodies this body is also part of the scene it is part of the same stage drama this body other bodies this world then you go one step further in your thoughts they are also not seer they are also seen they are creating the scene it is like the story writer the story is written and then the actions performed and the body is moving so this is before that but it is also part of the scene it is part of the same drama the story writer then comes your intention intention is that let's have this play have this role do you think someone is thief the other one is a police officer one is a politician one is a doctor why because everyone has chosen rule, roles what they desired for and they worked for it strived for it and they got that role so that intention is also the scene only part of the scene part of the drama only and then comes the last ultimate the one which is uh, the owner of this whole drama that owner is ego which says i am doing this others are doing this and this situation is there and i like it and i dislike it and i want things to be this way and things are happening this way that is the last bit of this whole big scene the scene is created because of this one who who pretends to own it so the whole scene starts from this ego the one in us which owns this body this mind and so others look separate to it consciousness has come a step lower and then it is known as ego with its conditioning and this all is part of seen remember seer is real you rest all is seen so so you can decide where you see yourself are you still taking seen as a seer the moment you are looking for the real seer then ask this question who is looking who is looking the one who is looking for the seer is that seer okay i'll say tell me what should i do a seeker can ask tell me what should i do 
where should I look? If this all is seen, then who am I? Then who is the seer? Can seer can be seen? Let's say ego is the seer. But we all know this ego, isn't it? There is someone in us which sees this ego. The way it pretends, plans, acts, reacts. Something in us knows it. That means that ego cannot be the seer. And what other thing we have? We have attention. Attention goes to things, beings. And then the same attention we use to look for the seer, isn't it? But can attention see the seer? That means if attention can see the seer, then attention becomes the seer, isn't it? Because what is seer? Seer is something after which nothing is behind it. Or nothing is observing the seer. Seer is the, at the last buck stops here. If something can watch the seer, then that becomes the seer, isn't it? Then seer becomes an object, seer becomes the scene. So where this whole drama ends? In this body consciousness, the drama ends only till ego. Because ego is watching. But if you go deeper into and start watching the ego, that means there is something in which also watches the ego. So in a way you understand that there is an ego and it is behaving and I hate this ego and I don't like this ego. So this self-talk is like mind talk. So a part of the mind is watching the ego. Ego and mind are part of the same parcel. So they act like that you are paying attention to the ego and you can watch it and then you don't like. People say like this, I don't like ego, you know, I hate ego and my ego rises and I don't like it and who is the one who does not like ego? Do you think that is the seer? All this drama unfolds in our internal environment. The one which gets affected by this environment cannot be the seer. Understand this. The one who says, look, I am evolving or I am feeling peace or I am, <laughs> I am, uh, my uh, my thoughts are less now um, and I'm feeling bliss. That is not the seer. That is only ego talking in a, in a very articulative way and feeling peace and now it is good and this is the way I wanted. And I wanted to go to this retreat. I felt so nice. I had beautiful experiences. Who is who talks like this? Who? Who is that? Do you think that is seer? This question, when you ask, who is the seer? If any answer comes, 
that has to be fake. Because who jumps and uh, raises hand and says, yes, yes, I am the seer. I have this experience. I know everything. I am the one who is going through all these experiences and stories. That is only personal awareness. That has flavor to it. That has a form. That has personality. That is the experiencer. Experiences, experiencer is not the seer. The one who is involved in all this is that ego only. Sometimes it says, I am feeling bliss. Other times it will say, oh, I am feeling very disturbed. Can you go beyond that? Which is always entangled, sometimes in peace, sometimes not in peace. Can you go in that That witnessing in which nothing affects it. If there is something in which there is no turbulence, no restlessness, then it will have no commentary also. That state in which it is completely impartial, neutral, without likes and dislikes, without judging, without being critical. It can't be mind. Mind, if you give definition of a person with a pure mind like this, then it is just again fake. Mind is exactly opposite. Mind's job is to criticize, analyze, like, dislike, judge plan so the one who owns mind will be that only isn't it the owner of mind will be like mind only isn't it how it can be different because that source that energy which owns mind is actually giving all this work to the mind that's why mind behaves like this how can that be pure Can you say anything in you which does not use mind, never has used mind and can put his hand on heart and say, I have not used mind. That is that. That isness. It cannot claim for anything. It cannot even claim for peace or happiness, it cannot say that I have achieved or I know. It is the knowledge. It is the awakened Buddha. It is you, you without anything, you, you without any form, any name, any claim for mind. If you are claiming your mind, claiming your story, The one who claims is the ego only, nothing else. Ego has multiple heads, multiple forms. You know in Ramayan, we talk about Ravan. Ravan has how many, 10 heads or 12 heads. What are these heads? These are like our multiple personalities, our ego, greed, desires, hate, all these things. It can, it can put so many hats. Very simple truth. If this body, this mind is in control of the ego, 
it will always be unhappy it only pretends to be happy but when this ego gone or you can say it is in control or in direct supervision of that awareness then it reflects on the body it reflects on the mind when the middleman gone middleman gone only isness is left isness is left you are at perfect ease and how do you know you are at perfect ease how do you want to check somewhere you have to get a brain imaging done or you have to go to a sage to say or you someone has to stamp on you when you discard what you are not then what is left is the proof in itself you seer has see buck stops here seer has nothing else to say to anyone or to prove or to there is nothing there it is only ego which thinks like that the seeker the, the one who is seeking he always think that i will achieve i will get and i will get enlightened and from duality there will be non duality but it is all myth it is like someone who in a dream is trying to achieve something but when the dream ends then whatever it is it is already there you never lost nobody lost we were all playing a role but somehow we got conditioned in that role whatever profession family circumstances but a knock on the head and you know that it doesn't matter what i do or not do because i am always a non doer i am always detached i am not this body or i can say i am all these bodies bodies are not outside me they are coming from this gadget called mind which has created this infinite universe which looks infinite but it can't be bigger than the source and i am that source that awareness all bodies belong to me no one is separate no one is an island we only pretend and that is the problem we have made ourselves so small in one body in one mind you give up ownership of body and mind and you are free like you are trying to hold hand of your body mind complex and you are asking to be free and you are not leaving the hand you are holding it body is not saying that i am so and so you say it no one's body cries and what is mind and you trust mind mind keeps changing all the time how many times your mind had deceived you 
how many thoughts you have had which were stupid crazy nonsense can you share your mind with others you will be ashamed maybe you can say your mind is getting purer now but whatever wherever it was so many times it creates stupid thoughts isn't it and you own it and then you use intellect to filter out some thoughts act on some thought discard some thoughts bhagwan says it is like you are trying to pick and choose in garbage it's all garbage and then there are so many people who talk about power of mind and power of thoughts and good thoughts and bad thoughts positive thoughts negative thoughts that's all okay that's at the level of your ego you can play like that but if you are a seeker if you want to be free then you have to leave this pick and choose you have to leave you have to enter into this choiceless it's not that when you are not picking and choosing anything then you will be free no but the moment you will be free you understand that the speaking and choosing in the dream was useless what is good what is bad same energy same isness is in every one of us i'll tell you sometimes i feel that others are only pretending to play this game that they don't know it i have to be very honest most of the time i only think this that people want to just play this game as a doubter and ask a question and uh, and they all know it because everyone every source even a corrupted mind that corrupted script is also coming from the same source and sometimes you can find the most intelligent or most spiritual thing from the most corrupted mind whom you people call he is a bad man he can also talk sometimes from that source so beautifully because that divine presence is in everyone no can be no one can be 100% corrupted how much you think you are ignorant but there is something in you even if you are 99% ignorant 1% something is there because it's coming from the same source you have put some filters but but even through that filter that that light is coming isn't it how much can you be ignorant so sometimes i feel there is a degree of ignorance in people and a seeker actually feels that that i am unfolding as if i am opening up and layer by layer though if you ask any sage he will say no this is all or none uh, it is all or none you are awake or you are ignorant but i think there is some unfolding happen some opening occurs that ego dissolves the process can be slow as you see the light at the end of the tunnel you see it you feel it there there changes in body changes the way you used to think your personality gets modified lot of things you discard you feel more peace more bliss
isness never claims anything important thing is that an isness is ever at ease and isness is never there to argue with anyone for any reason because everything is that isness some people are gyani they just pretend to be doing an act they might be shopkeeper or a beggar or a bureaucrat doesn't matter and then there might be another person who says he is ignorant but in that ignorance also he can say something from that same source so not completely ignorant and then who knows that some people have taken that role so seriously that they have completely lost their consciousness in that role maybe they are very honest role players they have completely lost their consciousness in that role whether after money or after whatever and even crime or whatever it they or good work they have lost themselves in it and if you tell them look this is not what you are they think it's all rubbish i have done it and i'll prove it let them be that so so a gyani is at ease with all types of personalities and egos and devils and evils and sage and this is all looking chaotic is actually perfect <laughs> it is play of the same consciousness in so many different ways like waves coming and going and it's a play that's what it vedanta explains it only by one thing this is leela leela means it's a play otherwise what is the purpose otherwise consciousness is the same there as an experiences in the egoistic way it interacts it enjoys the game it plays this game i believe it uh, deliberately gets lost in hindi they say ishwar ansh jeeva vinashi which means we are all part of the same god so the god in a way divides and gets into different forms for experiences and uh, and then we think of oh, i am separate and then i have to do something to get moksha liberation i have to come back to the source we give so many examples like a rain drop going into dissolving in water or river going in merging into ocean or and that's all good but you were never lost even in a role we are not lost and there is no dilemma here that if you do an act in a body in a form then you become individual jiva or and then others are separate no you can still be awareness and things still unfold for everyone it is not possibility it is reality but somewhere some people have got so much into that role that they are lost see bhagwan he had no interest in studies he had no interest in anything which we think is important no interest in family in that sense whatever it was you know and uh, some people have lot of interest you ask someone people says family comes first or someone can say my profession comes first or my country comes first or my religion comes first and i can kill others if someone comes and um, threatens my religion or whatever it can be so some some consciousness are so much conditioned that they can't uh, stares awareness as unwitness as as a witness who is uninvolved they they, they are uh, involved completely 
they are not neck deep, head deep, they are completely immersed in it. That's okay, consciousness have no issues with that. Sometimes we say that people who are deeply involved in these things and who are completely ignorant, then they become animals or plants or birds or maybe a stone. Because in that also it is compassion of that absolute, because an absolute wants to give you what you want. You want to be completely involved. Okay, I'll make you something which will be completely involved. Deeply ignorant. The one who is alcoholic, who is alcoholic? Alcoholic means these prefrontal lobes which are good for vigilance, which are awareness, attention. He wants to get lost it. He wants to be completely dupe. So that absolute with compassion gives another role in another life, in another form, which would be completely ignorant, just because you want that experience. It is only outsider who thinks the other one is in a trap and in a, in a sorry state. But ask him, he's enjoying it. Your awakening is only your awakening, in a way. But your awakening makes you awaken about everyone. Like you become um, agreeable with whatever way things are. 100% agreeable. Before realization, you do this drama of total acceptance and detachment. But actually, the reason is the, these things are important because when you know, when you are awake, then you don't have to put effort. That's natural. So this is the paradox. Egoistic person wants so many changes in this world. He, he thinks this is not right, this is not, not right. He becomes like a reformer or he wants things to be set right as if the God is sleeping and he can take that role and he can fix everything. That is the egoistic mode. The moment you are awake, now, now when that awake, awakeness, you know you are Brahman, you are that absolute. But now you lose interest in making any changes at any level for any reason. You have no intention, no desire. You are in the desirelessness because you, have, you are in total acceptance. Though you can do, but you have no intention. The one who has intention to do is a handicap. He can't do anything. And the one who can do has total acceptance. He is happy with whatever it is. In both ways, things are the way they are. Nothing to change. Other day, someone was talking about poverty in India and he was feeling sorry. Oh, look. Don't feel sorry unnecessarily. Probably others are in more bliss. You don't know them. Nobody knows internal state of any being. Only that being knows. And that being is the best judge for its own awakening or no awakening.
we are no one to disturb or judge anyone. But yes, if something happens to someone and is a seeker and wants to join and wants to know and, and liberates, it's his karma, his, his grace, his opening. Again, no one can say, I did for anyone. No one. There is no teacher and there is no listener. Nothing. It just things unfold on its own. No one can claim for anything for any reason. Know this truth. This is reality. Because there is no individual. This whole drama even in an ego mind is being displayed by that absolute only. His grace is on everyone. We talk about good karmas and bad karmas and bad things happening to bad people. Who are we to judge? How do we know who is bad, who is good? We have not seen the whole story. These are episodes. So many episodes have been before and so many episodes will happen later. How can you judge someone in these hundred years of your life? You don't know them, where they are coming from and where they are going. You know, each sage has devil in its past. He was something, maybe whatever. He must have done some sins. And every sinner's future is a sage because he will evolve to that. It is just a journey. Wherever you meet people in journey, you start judging them that he is a sage, he is a sinner. But you know, don't know. This is a, this is what the play is. It, things are keep moving. You pick up a lot of famous people. You know, they might have received uh, you know medals and recognition, and then they have gone into jail or some charges or. And there is a billionaire and then he ruined everything. All these ups and downs keeps going. If you follow anyone's life pattern, it all depends in what part of their life you have seen them and whatever opinion you have made. Things keep changing all the time. If your life stands on your mind, it is a roller coaster ride because mind keeps changing. If that is your support, your mind, no one can keep you happy. No one can make you happy. It's a miserable state. Maybe you can say less miserable or more miserable. That's the only difference. But if you stay as self, as that isness, bliss of that isness is supreme bliss and contentment and when you look for it and it unfolds anyone knows or not doesn't matter who is anyone Your little interest in that and diving into your own silence, leaving aside your mind, everyone can find within. Only thing needed is your interest. You know, Bhagwan says, you ask this question, who am I?
or you ask this question who is the seer this is a very powerful mantra who is the seer if anyone says i am the seer remember that is fake claim who is the seer while we are doing satsang a talk seer is un uninvolved witnessing of everything happening seer is in you seer is in me seer is only seer is everywhere seer has no name no form seer is pure untainted uninvolved outside the game of maya do giving energy to the game when you stop playing your game then the seer manifest in that pure silence when seer comes to you or you know seer no one has to tell you you jump in joy that eternal joy it never ends actually it gets more and more you know when people have a spiritual experience that experience gives lot of bliss and joy but then it fades away and the seeker or anyone becomes a seeker after that because they want it back it was so blissful but when this seer manifest in its full when it unfolds in you then it's like the flood gates are open it never ends somehow it gets more and more and more it dissolves all concepts or barriers all conditioning nobody knows how it works nobody knows what that seer now wants to do with the body is a uncharted territory unplanned because the planner has gone planner is dead but still things happen till that body is alive and when the body is dead still things happens with that energy as you can see bhagwan left his body in 1950 and things are still happening that is that energy so bhagwan is not an ego a body a mind it is that pure energy of that infinite power you remember it and it ignites fire in your heart it is within it is out it is everywhere 
it was not anything an entity in 1950 it is beyond time and space in this waking dream it has come to you and same is the satsang and we can call it grace maybe you are interested in it that's why it is happening to you because you want to come back home in a way it pick, picks and chooses isn't it chooses and picks something someone from somewhere randomly not like all the people from same suburb or same community uh, i don't know it can also happen but how it happens you can curse your life for any number of reasons but at least have gratitude that you have found some truth be thankful to it gratitude is so important because it melts away your ego it just finishes it everything in the initial part you don't even know when how things are dissolving sometimes you know sometimes you don't know but the process continues even in your sleep it continues even in wildest dreams and chaotic atmosphere and troubled mind and people complaining my mind is still very active it is restless <laughs> my life is crazy but if you stay it's like you are a drunken person moving towards home and you will reach home <laughs> even with whatever it is some people have doubts that i cannot do it my mind is really crazy or my circumstances this is this doubt is only created by mind it is a thought you are not thought thought body mind intellect everything is part of this illusion only of this dream but you are that awakened awareness which is outside the dream always awareness cannot even participate it can only give energy through which things are moving stay as a seer if you don't know what is seer just put this question within you who is the seer ask within intensely who is the seer drop this question and the seer will manifest it is like uh, you know that jinn which comes when you rub that lamp and it comes out and the best way to rub is who is the seer or who am i do you think god will dupe you is god a dodgy person because to whom you will ask this question who am i if you ask any other person he can fool you isn't it but when you put this question within you whom are you putting this question to to ego then ego can claim yes i am. i am then you ask again who am i and god will give you the truth 
give you the real answer, that silence. If your answer is sincere, if you are a sincere devotee and you ask this question, who am I? What will happen? Tell me. And, and the one who is answering is God. And I think if you think there's something which is ultimate, purest of pure, that is God, isn't it? And if you put this question to God, do you think it, he will fool you? <laughs> will say that you are this body, you are this bloody ego, go to hell. Do you think God is like that? He has that ultimate. Supreme compassion, full of compassion, full of unconditional love. If you could put this question, who am I? It, it will dissolve you. This question will dissolve you. And that unmanifest will manifest in you. Because you have never asked this question. You just pretend to be ego and you own this body mind and you keep moving in this world like a blind person. Blind, drunken. But when you sincerely ask this question, Then this door of heart opens and it will show you how beautiful you are, what actually you are. And this role playing is not you. And he comes to your rescue because you have sincerely asked this question. Don't believe on any guru. Believe in the real God within you. This guru, this God, this self. He will tell you the truth. So you become that truth. Don't take any long cuts or going to somewhere else and doing some sort of practices. If your devotion is, is real, if you are devotee to the self within you, then the self will manifest. Give away your arrogance, be humble. You know, in Hindi, there is a word to become mitti. Mitti means like soil or dust. Become dust. Mitti ho jana. Become like dust, like you are nothing. You, are, you have no say. Like if there are 10 people sitting, you don't want even to be counted. Then see how powerful that becomes. This is the problem, understand, the seeker who has arrogance, the seeker who has always achieved so many things in life, then he thinks he can also achieve this. This is the complete stupidity. It is, there is nothing to achieve here. Here you have to lose everything what you think as achievements. Those achievements in this world, all those medals are the obstacles. There is, to this rule, there is not a single exception. No arrogant person has ever known self. Not a single exception. Otherwise, it is duality. 
if you have ego and you have achieved what what have you achieved what it is not a medal it is not a thing it is not the part of seeing it is the seer to reach seer there is an obstacle in form of ego because ego thinks he or she is the seer Silence is the seer. Pure awareness is the seer. Uninvolved awareness, impersonal awareness, which has no ownership of anything, whatever you see in this world, including the body, mind, intellect, emotions, thoughts, anything. which looks like mine if that stays with you as yours then you are not the seer then you are personal ego ego is personal and self is impersonal actually calling it self is wrong it's not self because self you always say as something personal belonging to me we make it an object and that can be a problem better to call it awareness in vedanta they have a beautiful term brahman brahman is impersonal atma looks personal like mine self because ego thinks it is self that there but that pure self is only awareness be that seer which is impersonal we are that seer is watching in that silence this body and other bodies it is impartial it it treats all bodies as not even treats it's not even involved it just watches and because it is not involved in this messy game of egoistic attitudes that's why it is in bliss always it enjoys its own bliss it loves its own company it's not seeking any pleasure from anything outside it don't think a sage is punishing the body and not involved in sensory indulgence an egoistic mind touches his feet and says oh you are so good you are only wearing one pair of clothes and you live in a cave and he is in bliss he is not as, as stupid as us he is always in that bliss and also important to know that if someone is seeking pleasures indulging in sensual pleasures whatever the whole world says or whatever he or she says he cannot be a sage he cannot be a gyani yes if 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 affluence is born in affluence if there are things he is not discarding but he is not running for anything because no sensory indulgence no money no fame nothing can give that bliss 
you cannot buy in any shop. And buck stops here, there's nothing else to look for. Here everything is coming and going and transient. Nothing is permanent. Nothing can give you permanent happiness. But if you look in that impersonal self, that is happiness. Awakening is happiness. Be that seer. Don't stop till you are completely dissolved in this scene. where your identification in the scene is completely lost, where only that isness is left. Where no more doership is left, things might still happen, but they lose their meaning. No doership. You meet people, they always talk about that I'm busy. I have no time for this and I'll try to find some time for satsang or I'll catch up with you. I have so many projects, you know, what is this? Doership, doership, doership. So much identification with the body, with mind, with thoughts with situations and it's not just one person, almost everyone talks the same language. And we just no, don't talk, If even if we are talking that's also okay, but we feel like that also, under the pump. And it's not just the one who is working or doing a job, even retired, even who are not working, unemployed. Everyone. Even the seekers who have all the money, everything, and they are on the spiritual path, they also behave like a doer. Morning I do this japa, then I do this yoga and then I stand on one leg and then I do this and all I do, I am doing. I... It's better you don't do those things. Just don't say I do, I do, I do. Look within. That is why you see millions of followers for yoga and all those things because <laughs> doership. At least I am doing something, you know. If someone says you don't do anything and you are that, nobody will like it. Because that ego wants something to be done. The moment you turn as a seer in your own seeing, thousands of things drop because all are creations of your mind. Thoughts come to you, I should do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. And it never ends. 
I know I have taken more time, but I'll just end with this short story. I met someone in the last couple of days who said to me that I plan so much so that that after all early morning plannings, then I can't do anything in that day because I plan like dozens of things and then I get confused and big headache and then I just go back to my house and sleep. This is what the mind is, you know, it plans too much. No trust for that absolute, that leave some planning for that biggest planner. Give some rest to your mind. I am pretty sure a sansari's mind must be cursing that person. That's why it gives headache and other problems. We keep giving task after task, sometimes multiple tasks. Sometimes we give opposite tasks to the mind. We want to go there? No, no, I want to go there. The mind shows, oh my God, what type of person, ego I have got? So confused. And then we blame mind, that mind is giving headaches. If mind has a voice, mind will say, this man is so stupid. You correct and the mind will follow you. Don't blame mind for anything. Mind is just a mere instrument. It will go in the direction you take it. If you become antarmukhi, you look into the self, mind disappears. But you have incessant desires one after the other. Mind gets so busy. Stay as the seer and allow mind to rest. Shanti, Shanti.